Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. Welcome to In Heavenly Places with yours truly, Elder Mark S. Brantley. And once again, I am glad that you are tuning in by the way of Facebook Live uh, to this broadcast message. And we do have a message for you uh, this evening. First, I would like to wish everyone a prosperous and healthy new year. I hope so far it's uh, off to a good start. And being that this is the first Sunday of the new year, I hope you were able to attend a local church, a local assembly, so that you can then participate in corporate prayer. You're probably wondering, well, Elder Brantley, why are you so concerned about uh, your viewers, or anyone for that matter, being part of a local assembly. Well, yes, we uh, made a shift because of COVID. The exigency of the matter, uh, the necessity of the matter, caused us to shift from going from in-person worship to online or virtual worship. But now that COVID is sort of behind us, at least to the extent that it was a pandemic, we can now attend church in person. For the word of God tells us that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Now, don't get it mixed up. I want you to view uh, in heavenly places. I appreciate your support and your viewership, but it, I would just be remiss if I didn't encourage you to also worship at a house of worship, worship at a local assembly. And you may have those that may disagree. They may say, well, Elder Brantley, we are the church and wherever we are, whether it's home or somewhere else, uh, we are worshiping the Lord wherever we may be. And yes, that is truth. But remember, the church is also the body of Christ. And we being members of the body of Christ, Amen. All the members need one another. The foot doesn't work alone without the ankle. The ankle doesn't work by itself. It needs the calf and the thigh. It needs the hip. And sometimes it needs the hand. 
So yes, we are individually the church because we are the temple of the most high God where the Holy Spirit dwells within us, but we are also members of the body of Christ. And believe it or not, we need one another. So the focus is not necessarily on you, but it's on the focus is on others. How might I be a blessing to other people? Amen. Because I may um, encounter a brother or sister in need, but I won't know if I'm not in corporate worship. Amen. I may need to uh, intercede on someone's behalf, but I won't know unless I'm in corporate worship. So that's why the Lord baptized us by the one spirit into the one body. So that's why I always encourage uh, my viewers here in heavenly places to make sure you are attending a local assembly. And for those that may not have a church, whether they're in another state uh, other than Arizona, where I'm from, or you may be in Texas, you may be even in New York, which was my previous uh, home state, wherever you are. If you don't have a home church, a place of worship, put it in the comment section. And what I will do is follow up with you to make sure you have a local place of worship. Amen. All right. God bless you. And again, Happy New Year. And um, I'm praying that this is a blessed new year. Amen. Old things are passed away. Amen. That's what the scripture says, right? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Well, the same applies in this new year. 23 is behind us. And now we're looking ahead as we press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, again, I'm glad uh, that you are joining me. A way to partner with this ministry is by hitting the share button. Why? Because we want others to hear the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because there's a lot of voices out there. And for those that are preaching the truth, it is important that others hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. So hit that share button. Partner with us by doing that. Amen. God bless you. And let us proceed into our message on today. And we're going to uh, look at our scripture. If you have your Bibles, open it and turn with me. Or if you have your iPads, your telephones, scroll over uh, to your app and turn with me to the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter. That's Exodus chapter 32, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 32, and we're going to commence reading at verse 19. And the word of God reads accordingly. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, what did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, let not thy anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, 
who is on the Lord's side. Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we praise and magnify your name. Oh God, we give you glory and honor. There's no one like you in all the universe. We thank you, Lord, how you brought us out of 23 into a new year, into a new beginning. And we say thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we praise and magnify you. You've been good to us, oh God even down through the years. And we just want to show our appreciation by giving you the lips of our praise. You're worthy, Lord. Oh God, you're worthy of the praise. And now we come before you asking that we come into your presence by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you cover us from head to toe. Oh God, help us to hear what the spirit says unto the church. Oh, cover us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us, oh God. Oh, God, make us whole, Father. Oh, in the name of Jesus, have your way tonight. Speak a word for your people. Encourage someone, oh, God. Save, set free, and deliver. Destroy every yoke. Break every fetter. Loose every chain. In the name of Jesus, bind the forces of evil. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, bless your people as only you can. Renew their strength. Oh, God, revive, oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal, Father, for you said by your stripes we are healed. Oh, God, let your spirit move in a mighty way that we may glorify you that we may magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So looking at verse 26, Moses, it says, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto them. And I'm asking you tonight, who is on the Lord's side? Oh, hallelujah. Who is on the Lord's side? Oh, hallelujah. Now, before we actually get into our message, we know there's been a lot of news going on in the Black community, entertainment world, in the Black community, and also in the church world. And I'm not going to spend time uh, talking about the things that you already know. I'm definitely not going to use this platform to name names. You already know the names. But what I do need you to know and to understand is that we have to discern and be aware of certain distractions. Amen. And uh, the reason why it's a distraction is because we are getting a lot of information, which in some respect is contradictory. Some is filled with uncertainty, and we don't know exactly uh, what the matter is. But one, one thing we do know is that the truth will be revealed. I don't care who it is. Uh, our sins will find us out. Amen. But until God reveals, amen, the truth, we ought not to spend time going back and forth with distractions. Amen. Now, when you look on YouTube and other platforms, uh, there are these arguments and disputes. Even the people of God are arguing with one another. And that is a distraction. And um, I'm not one to be uh, political, and definitely this platform is not political. But what I need to say is that these distractions are interfering with our perspective on what our next elections, the results will be. Amen. And, and, and these elections that are coming up this year are of vast importance not only when it comes to elections, 
But when it comes to uh, certain cases that are before the Supreme Court. Now, I know the public uh, and public opinion doesn't necessarily impact how the Supreme Court decides on certain matters. But nevertheless, public opinion could nevertheless keep the justices in line within the boundaries of ruling according to law and not according to their own political whims. So in that matter, political opinion and awareness can be a check on the temptation of jurists deviating from how they analyze cases and how they rule on things that affect our nation. So there are several, there are a few cases of vast importance that are before the court. And there are presidential primaries. There will be a president elected come uh, this November. And I'm not telling you who to vote. That's not my job. What I'm telling you is that you ought to be aware of who it is uh, that you should vote for and who you should not vote for. And as the Black community, we ought not allow anything to be able to drive wedges between the Black community. Uh, we should, and, and, and every Black person uh, doesn't think the same way. We're not a monolith. But for the most part, there are certain issues that should not be controversial or should not be in controversy. There should not be any disagreement when it comes to certain issues in the Black community. So when we allow these distractions to take our attention, we are not an informed, we, we do not become an informed electorate. And that's what's important. Yes, it's we, we need to know the truth of the matter when it comes to the things that we hear in entertainment and uh, in uh, uh, church circles. Uh, but keep your eyes focused because, you know, when it comes to a circus, you know, a circus has a ringmaster who is really in control of all the acts in the circus. And he's actually directing how things are supposed to move and happen. And we know that in a circus, which makes it um, attractive and entertaining, is that a lot of the acts in a circus are dangerous. When someone is uh, in a cage with a lion or a tiger, uh, that's dangerous. Um, and, and life can be in peril. When you see the trapeze artists uh, doing their act and doing their flips in the air, that can be dangerous. And therefore, there can be accidents and tragedies. And in the traditional circus, when there is a tragedy that has occurred or a fatal accident, what the ringmaster would do is activate the clowns. So the clowns would go forth and the clowns would then uh, entertain the audience to distract them from the tragedy. So my point is, is don't allow the clowns, and I'm not calling anyone a clown, I'm using this in a metaphoric way. Uh, don't allow the clowns to distract you from the true issues that are before you, especially in this coming election. Because if you are distracted, it will be a tragedy if someone is elected that you disagree with uh, wholeheartedly. So I implore you not to be distracted by the noise. But even as people of God, we ought to be focused on who? Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to be focused on our Savior. And we need to be like the sons of Issachar, discerning the times in which we live in. Because the times, amen, are dire. We know that Jesus is soon to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All you got to do is look around and see, amen, that Jesus is near. Oh, hallelujah. And it's not our 
um, duty. And I know we we love to follow personalities and even prominent preachers, amen, because, you know, we like uh, their level of success. Uh, we like to follow winners. And especially in the church world, we want to identify with a pastor that is successful. And sometimes we live vicariously through our pastors and we lift them on a pedestal because we may be living belief our privilege as a church member, but we can always say, well, that's my pastor. As if you or your pastor is a substitute for your stature or your way of life. But in your mind, you are identifying with the success of your pastor because you're, you are attending a church of someone who appears to be successful. But you know, you got your eyes on the wrong prize. Oh, glory, hallelujah, amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And you ought not to be following anybody. I don't care who it is. If they are not following Jesus, if they are not uh, preaching the unadulterated word of God, then you ought not follow them. Oh, hallelujah. You ought to follow Jesus. Amen. Jesus uh, is the standard. And if the person is not preaching Jesus, then you need to walk out of that local assembly. If that preacher is not preaching the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you need to find another house of worship. If that preacher is only preaching prosperity and motivation, but is not preaching the blood of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, that can wash away my sins, then you need to find another congregation. Amen. I don't have time to get caught up in a personality. I don't have time to get caught up in someone's charisma. Amen. As a matter of fact, there will come somebody that will be very charismatic and he will lead the world into destruction. And Paul calls him the wicked one. His name is the Antichrist, and he will be doing signs and wonders. As a matter of fact, he will appear to be such a successful leader, amen, that he will lead thousands and even millions into hell, amen, into the lake of fire. Don't get caught up, amen, in someone's success. Don't get caught up in someone's personality, Amen. The Bible says, let this mind be in you as it is in Christ Jesus. And if that preacher doesn't have the mind of Christ, amen, you need to leave him alone. I don't care who it is, amen, that's telling you, amen, that you ought to stay. Oh, hallelujah. The question tonight is, who is on the Lord's side? Amen. Moses didn't say who is on my side. Moses asked the question and he said, who is on the Lord's side? And that's what you got to answer. Amen. You got to answer that question. Who is on, if you are on the Lord's side? You know, we got to keep our eyes focused on the prize. Amen. We got to make up in our mind for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Oh, hallelujah. You know, you got to make up in your mind, am I going to be uh, a, a, a servant of the Lord? Um, am I going to believe in holiness? Amen. You got to choose between being holy and being worldly. Amen. Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. Amen. You can't be holy and have one foot in the world and serve mammon. Oh, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, John said in his first epistle in chapter two, verse 15, he says, love not the world. Oh, hallelujah. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father isn't in him. 
amen, you are not to be involved or interested in the things of the world. I know it's tight, but it's right. Oh, hallelujah. That's why it's about the scriptures. This ain't coming from Brother Brantley. This is what the Lord is saying through his word. And you got to make up in your mind who is on the Lord's side. Are you going to let uh, his word abide in you and you abide in his word? Or are you going to have this uh, feeling of relativism, uh, this feeling of you're judging me? Oh, the devil is a liar. I'm not judging you. It's the word. Amen. That rebukes. It's the word that reproaches. It's the word that rebukes. It's the word that instructs. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I got nothing to do with it. If the word wasn't here in print, amen, I wouldn't be able to stand today before you. Amen. With a message. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you got to choose because you can't serve two masters. You can't have one foot in the church and another foot in the club. Lord, have mercy, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we're living in an age uh, of the church where the church is lukewarm. And when things are lukewarm, uh, anything goes. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, when uh, you have food or you have uh, uh, a beverage at a certain temperature, you know, germs and bacteria can't survive. You know, if it's freezing temperatures, it can't survive. Germs will be killed in freezing temperatures. If it's too hot, amen, it reaches boiling point, uh, germs or bacteria you know, that's why things are sterilized in heat. Oh, hallelujah. But if it's lukewarm, it's a petri dish. It's an incubator for all kinds of bacteria. I'm talking about spiritual bacteria. I'm talking about spiritual germs that grow and fester. And the devil loves a lukewarm church because he can get into the ministry, amen, and bring others under the pretext of being a church of Jesus Christ. But in essence, it's a den of thieves, all kinds of ungodly, amen, can be going on. But Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Amen. I don't like it that you're lukewarm. As a matter of fact, Jesus told Laodicea, because thou seest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I don't know if you know, but this is the Leo the Saiyans, the Saiyan age. Amen. We're dealing with churches that are rich, churches that appear to be prosperous. Amen. Air condition, wall to wall monitors and videos. Amen. Able to have all types of AV communication systems. Uh, also, carpet. Amen. Wall to wall. All the amenities uh, that churches provide. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm reminded that Jacob was in the wilderness. And the Bible says he laid his head on some hard stones. There was no carpet, but he saw heaven open up and there he saw a ladder that reached to heaven. And at the top of the ladder, he saw and heard the voice of God. And on the ladder, he saw angels ascending and descending upon the ladder. And there he said, oh, this is a terrible place, which means this is an awesome place. Hallelujah. I'm going to call it Bethel, which means the house of God. Hallelujah. And all I got in this house of God are these pillows 
Amen. Where I laid my head. All I have in this house of God is a dirt pavement that is beneath my feet. But as long as the presence of God is there, that it is a house of worship. Even if I don't have air conditioning, even if we don't have a TV monitor, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty to give God his glory. Liberty to give God his praise. Liberty to magnify him. I don't care, amen, what type of building it is. As long as God meets me, amen, in the house of worship where I can praise him. I, I can bless him at all times. And his praise can continually be in my mouth. Somebody need to put their hands together and give God the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who is on the Lord's side? Hallelujah. You got to ask, answer that question in 2024. Are you going to be on the Lord's side? Not talking about being on Moses' side. I'm not talking about being on Aaron's side. And I'm not talking about being on Miriam's side because all of them have flaws. Moses asked, who is on the Lord's side? And that is Shamama. Hallelujah. And that's what you have to answer in 2024. Am I going to live for the Lord? Am I going to live a righteous life? Am I going to live a holy life? Because I don't want to go back to my vomit. For the Bible says a backslider is like a dog that goes back to their vomit. And once you regurgitate it, you ought not to go back and eat it. That's what a dog will do. That's what a heathen will do. But once God picks you up, once he turns you around, sets your feet on solid ground, once he washes you in his blood, once he cleanses you from the inside, Something on the inside begins to work on the outside. And then you become transformed, as the Bible says. It says, I beseech you, brethren, offer your bodies a living sacrifice. We're talking about who's on the Lord's side tonight. Offer your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not be not conformed to this world but be transformed amen by the renewing of your mind that you might prove that good and acceptable will of God God wants some folk that are proving that holiness is right God wants folk that are living holy proving that the will of God is right in your life because God's will is divine. Oh, God established his will before there was a when or a where, before there was a then or a there, before the echoes walked the corridors of solitude and the zigzag lightning played their games in the universe. God established his will. He didn't need a conversation. He didn't need to get a board of directors together. He didn't need a board of trustees. He didn't need a board of deacons or a board of missionaries. He didn't need a bishop's council. He didn't need an apostle's board. But the Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the word. He is the Lagos. Oh, hallelujah, the word incarnate. Now, he is the word made flesh. Now, and when we look at his life, now, it is the word of God. Now, and the word of God now, is our standard of living. Now, the word of God now, is our standard of holiness. Now, the word of God now, is our standard of righteousness. Now, I'm asking you tonight, now, who is on the Lord's side? Now, never mind that preacher. 
Because if he falls, are you connected to Jesus? Are you in the true vine where you are abiding as a branch? Because if you're in the true vine, I don't care who on the vine withers. The true vine will never wither. The true vine will never fail. Now, Jesus said, now, I am the true vine. Now, let my word abide in you. Now, and you abide in my word. Now, for if you don't abide now, in the vine, now, you cannot be now, a part of the vine. Now, you cannot be separated. Now, a part of the vine. Now, because a branch now can't bring forth fruit now of its own self. Now, there's many vines out there. Now, many personalities. Now, many leaders. Now, leading folk astray. Now, now I'm not saying now that preachers don't make mistakes. Now, and preachers don't. Now, make errors. Now, and some of them just do. Now, outright dastardly things. Now, but your mind now needs to be made up. Now, your mind now needs to be fixed. Now, your heart now needs to be now on Jesus. Now, no matter now what happens to preacher so and so. Now, no matter what happens. Now, to bishop so and so. Now, for the arms of flesh, now, will fail you. Now, but I heard now, that Jesus, now, his arm, now, will never fail. Now, for his arm, now, is not short, now, that it cannot save them. Now, but it reaches, now, to the highest, now, the highest mountain. Now, it reaches now to the lowest valley. Now, this blood, now, it makes me, now, it strengthens me, now, from day to day. Now, and this blood, now, shall never, now, never, now, lose its power. Now, stay with Jesus. Now, stay under his blood. Now, for when I stay under the blood, now, the world can't do me. Now, no harm. Now, no harm. Now, no harm. Now, yes, it might hurt. Now, when I see a preacher fall. Now, yes, it might hurt. Now, when I see a preacher stumble. Now, but when you look at the Old Testament. Now, there are many preachers. Now, that were in error. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, but you follow them. Now, when they follow Christ, now, when they stop following Christ, now, then you need to go another way. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, you remember Jim Jones? Now, he was a cult leader. Now, hallelujah. Now, brought people to an island. Now, we're talking about church folk now. Now, and he brought them to Guyana. Now, and there he had them. Now, drink Kool-Aid. Now, and I'm here to tell you. Now, put the Kool-Aid down. Now, I don't care what the preacher is offering. Now, it may look good. Now, it may sound good. Now, it may even taste good. Now, but when you look at inside, now, there are bitter dregs. Now, a drink of death. Now, you better call on Jesus. Now, when you want the truth. Now, hallelujah. Now, the word says, now, what shall I render now, unto the Lord? Now, for all his benefits. Now, I now will drink the cup of salvation. Now, Acts 2.38, now, the cup of salvation, now, the death, burial, and resurrection, now, of Jesus Christ, now, the cup of salvation, now, being born again, now, of the water, now, and of the spirit, now, the cup of salvation, now, oh, repent, now, be baptized, now, every one of you, now, for the remission of your sins. Now, and ye shall now receive the gift now, of the Holy Ghost.
Ghost, the cup of salvation. I will take the cup of salvation and then I'll call upon the name of the Lord like they did in the days of Enos. Hallelujah. The children of Cain, they were living like the devil. They were gifted. They were talented. They were musicians. Yes, go in Genesis. Somewhere around Genesis 4 and 5. They were musicians. They were artifices. They were gifted in high metals and metallurgy. Oh, hallelujah. But they were sinners didn't follow the God of their fathers. And after the word speaks of them in the last verse of the chapter, it spoke about the son of Seth whose name was Enos. And it said in those days, Enos and the sons of Seth called on the name of the Lord, who is on the Lord's side. Now, then you call on his name. Now, who is now on the Lord's side? Now, then give him his glory. Now, give him his praise. Now, who is now on the Lord's side? Now, put down worldly things. Now, put down that club dancing. Now, doing the wobble. Now, doing the electric slide. Now, the devil is a liar. Now, take that out of the house of God. Now, oh, it's a holiness church. Now, for it's God's church. Now, Jesus told Peter, now, upon this rock, now, I'm going to build my church. Now, at the gates of hell, now, shall not prevail. Now, against it. Now, if you're in a church, now, and they're not living right, now, and they don't want to listen, now, find another church. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, I don't care who it is. Now, don't allow a leader now, to lead you to hell. Now, just like in our text, now, we see that Moses now, went to the mountain now, to receive the commandments of God. Now, he was there for 40 days. Now, he was there for 40 nights. Now, and the people now, were at the foot of the mountain. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, now God now appointed Aaron now as the high priest. Now, there was no other position now higher than that. Now, besides Moses, now who spoke to God now face to face. Now, but the high priest now had the authority now to go into the tabernacle now into the holies of holies now to offer up incense. Now, which represented the prayers now, of God's people. Now, offer up the blood now, of sacrifice now, for the nation's atonement. Now, it was a high office. Now, it would be like an apostle. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, and here, now, the people now, talk the apostle. Now, apostle Aaron. Now, let us build now, a fake God. Now, let us build now, a God of gold. Now, a material God. Now, a wealthy God. Now, a small G God. Now, and put it now, where we can see it. Now, so Aaron now, had them take off their earrings. Now, took off their necklaces. Now, took off their anklets. Now, took off all their gold now, that they spoiled from the Egyptians. Now, gave it to Aaron. Now, Aaron melted it down. Now, you know how they melt down gold. Now, he melted it down. Now, put it in a mold. Now, then he fashioned it. Now, Lord have mercy. Now, and when he built the gold, now, there was revelry in the camp. Now, 
folk were sitting now they were dancing now now dancing now around a golden calf now they were led now by the apostle now they were led now by the chief bishop now they were dancing now all around the calf now god said to moses now go down now for the people now have corrupted themselves now don't allow corruption now to get in your church now don't allow corruption now to get into your life now keep your life holy now keep your church holy now moses now go down now for the people now have corrupted themselves now moses went down now with the tablets with the commandments now written by the finger of god now he saw joshua now on his way down the mountain now joshua said now i hear now something in the camp now but moses said now it ain't what i hear now it's not a war now it's not trouble in the camp now from any enemy now but i hear the voice now of singing now who are you singing to now what are your lyrics now what beat are you singing to now it's not just about the lyrics now but it's the spirit now that is in the music now you know music now has a certain frequency now and it gets your body now to react a certain way now the song could say all day Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, but if it reminds you of the club, now, it's not of God. Now, Lord have mercy. Now, I hear singing in the camp. Now, Moses and Joshua, now, went down. Now, couldn't believe their eyes. Now, are these the same folk? Now, that God delivered. Now, what a mighty hand. Now, are these the same folk um, now, that crossed the Red Sea? Um, now, are these the same folk um, now, that sang with Miriam now, as they were coming on land um, now, out of the Red Sea? Um, now, are these the same folk um, now, that was at the waters um, now, that were bitter? Now, but God touched the waters. Now, and their bitterness now became sweet. Now, and these the same folk now that were fought now by Amalek. Now, with the Amalekites now ambushed them. Now, but God now strengthened Moses now to keep both arms in the air. Now, and as long as his arms now were in the air. Now, God gave them the victory. Now, as long as your arms now are in the air, now, giving God the praise, now, giving him the glory, now, you will have now, the victory. Now, put your hands in the air, now, like you just don't care. Now, uh, now give God the glory. Now, we're going to stop it right there. Now, give him the praise. Now, don't go back to the club. Now, I just said, put your hands in the air. Now, like you just don't care. Now, Paul said, lifted up holy hands. Now, without wrath. Now, and without doubt. Now, that's without care. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, thank you, Jesus. Now, these same folk. Now, that God showed his glory. Now, Ten times in Egypt, now ten plagues, now they are over this calf, now they are dancing around it. Now Moses went to them, now and said to them, now you have sinned a great sin. Now he said to them, now who is on the Lord's side? Now he told the Levites, now come to me. Now, because we need some priests now in order to minister in the tabernacle. Now, come to me. Now, the Levites came to him. Now, Moses asked, now, who is now on the Lord's side? 
Now, and when the people chose, now they went to Moses. Now, and then Moses said, Now, all right, now you made your choice. Now, Levites, now arm yourself. Now, get a weapon. Now, I know you're a priest, now, but you got a weapon. Now, you are a priest, now, a royal priesthood now, now, and you got a weapon. Now, and you got armor, now, the armor of God, now, and the word, now, which is the sword of the spirit, now, use the word, now, against ungodliness, now, use the word, now, against unholiness, now, use the word, now, against any evil, now, and say it's not written, now, as Jesus told the devil, now, when he was tempted in the wilderness, now, oh, hallelujah, now, Levites, now, take your sword, now, go into the camp, now, and for the folk that didn't choose God, now, thrust them through. Now, we got to get rid of this cancer. Now, we got to spew out. Now, this lukewarmness. Now, this lay of the saying spirit. Now, we can't allow it in the camp. Now, get rid of it. Now, the Levites went. Now, from tent to tent. Now, rooting out. Now, all unrighteousness. Now, all those. Now, that wanted to serve. Now, the devil, now, rather than a righteous God, now, ah, now, shout hallelujah, oh glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, come on and praise him, come on and praise him, put your hands up and give him the praise, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, Give him the glory. Hallelujah. God is asking, who is on the Lord's side? And my answer is today and forever will be, me, Lord, I am on your side. I am on the Lord's side. I'm not on the world's side. I'm not on Hollywood's side. I'm not on Wall Street side. Hallelujah. I'm not even in a prominent church side. Hallelujah. Led by prominent preachers, but I'm on the Lord's side. <laughs> Yay, glory. And you got to make up in your mind because the stakes are too high. You don't want to miss this first rapture out of here. You don't want to miss this first resurrection. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because that's what the rapture and for your deep, you deep folks, harpazo is all about. It's a resurrection. And you want to be in time for the resurrection. But you got to choose a side. Are you on the Lord's side? Or are you on the world side led by the devil? Hallelujah, because he's the God, small g, of this world. Hallelujah. So when you in league with the world, you in league with the devil. Because he is the producer of all the contracts. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is your covenant with? Are you in covenant with the devil? Are you in covenant with God? Because God's covenant is through his son, Jesus Christ. It's called the new covenant, where he takes the laws that he gave Moses on that mountain, and he writes it on our hearts and in our minds. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit that is in us, that guides us into all truths. Into all truth, that is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will give you the spirit of discernment to know between right and wrong. What's of God and what is it? But if you're carnal and in the flesh, Jesus said you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, and you're naked. 
and he challenged the rich church because they were rich. Jesus said it. He said they were rich and increased with goods. Hallelujah. But he said they were poor, miserable, naked, and wretched. And he, and blind. And he beseeched them to buy gold, try by the fire. Buy salve for their blind eyes. Buy garments of righteousness. And take off those filthy rags you think look good. Yeah, you may be wearing Gucci and Ferragamo, hallelujah, and Calvin Klein and Vera Wang, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tommy Hilfiger. But if your heart isn't right, they're filthy rags. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who is on the Lord's side? And you need to declare that now. Answer, who is on the Lord's side? Answer it. Right now in your living room, right now in your car, if you're driving, who is on the Lord's side? Hallelujah. If you answer it the right way, God will bless you even where you're sitting right now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Shabbat Hallelujah. He will strengthen you to make it. Hold on, child of God. Don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel. Hallelujah. You come too far to turn back around. Amen. Well, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. As I always say, we thank God for your support and your viewership. We thank God for those that uh, write via mail to In Heavenly Places, uh, care of Elder Marcus Brantley, 975 East Riggs Road, Suite 12-170, Chandler, Arizona, 85249. Thank God for those that write. Thank God for those that also uh, support monetarily through the Cash App app which is in dollar in heavenly places, one word. And we thank God for you that hit the share button because that's the most important so that others can hear the word of God. Amen. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We thank you for what's been said and done. We thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for even the question, who is on the Lord's side? And Lord, you've heard the answers tonight that those that have said, we are on your side, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you give them that miracle they're looking for. Give them that blessing, that victory they've been looking for. Touch their finances, heal their bodies, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we are on your side. We thank you for the opportunity to be on your side. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. That is the door that is opened. Oh God, we thank you for being the good shepherd. We thank you for being the light of the world. We thank you, Lord, for being the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And as we leave this platform, but not from your presence, we ask that you give each and every one peaceful and restful sleep. Father, we ask that you bless each and every one Lord, during their week at work, oh God, even during this new year of 2024, we ask that you pour even your blessings in 2024. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God willing, we'll see you on next Sunday. I hope this was a message that was blessing, a blessing to you. Uh, opening the new year. Amen. And starting it off on a good note. And until then, next week, that is, Lord willing, shalom, shalom. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 